God's children said, Amen. Amen. How beautiful is that? Good morning, Central Church. Morning. The Lord be with you. What a joy it is for all of us to be welcomed by the Spirit into this time of worship. Central Church is a fully inclusive church that seeks to welcome all of God's children, and we are so delighted. All of you are here with us, whether you are in person or joining us from online or will be joining us later in the week. It is a joy to have you with us. I would love it if you would sign those lovely pew pads and send those down. I just really enjoy spending time with those during the week. It's a lovely blessing. My name is Pastor Teresa. I am part of the pastoral team here at Central Church. Pastor Paul is on vacation for the weekend, so we hope he and Sherry are having a wonderful, wonderful time together. And I'm delighted to be here with Tom Hall. Tom, take it away. Hey, thank you. Um, I'm going to be your liturgist today. Uh, our tech team is uh, back there with Pastor Mark, uh, making sure all that view this uh, worship service are taken care of when it comes to sight and sound. Uh, Knud is going to be our scripture reader today, and our special music is going to be provided by Sean and the Chancel Choir, led by our new choir director, Jaron Johnson. Uh, Jaron is a fresh reminder to me of why I need to stick with being a liturgist. A <laughs> uh, few announcements. Um, following the service in the Welcome Center, the United Women in Faith will be selling uh, uh, proceeds from their cooking and their preparations yesterday. Um, chicken salad and such for uh, sale in the Welcome Center. Uh, please stop in and help yourself. Uh, might be an easy lunch for you today. Um, Pastor Paul needs some help delivering some supplies and other items to the local schools, so if you're able to help Pastor Paul in the early days of this coming week, Tuesday or Wednesday, please give the uh, office a call on Tuesday. Uh, the office is closed tomorrow, so if you could help out, uh, Tuesday would be the time to call. And as you read all the announcements in the calendar and in the bulletin, um, it's a good time to clean out your closets. As you'll see, there's a couple uh, items in there where there are need for clothes uh, for the community. So any uh, efforts you could make to help with those, that would be much appreciated. Um, and that's for the announcements, unless you know of any, Pastor nope, Teresa. that's all I had. So a few <laughs> weeks ago, I asked you what it is that you love about this beautiful church family. And many, many of you responded. And your answers not only gave me a glimpse into the heart of this beautiful church family, it helped focus this worship service today. We're gonna to spend a little time with a look back over the past year and all that has happened and how your gifts of time and talent and resources supported all that this church did for and with one another and in service to the world. And a chance to dream for a moment of what is to come. So welcome to worship, Central Church family. And now Tom will lead us in our call to worship and opening prayer. Please join me in the um, call to worship as shown on the screen. With patience and love, we come as one family. We are one body of Christ. Come, speak of truth, truth told in love. Gather to listen and share our story. We are God's children, parts of Christ's purpose. We rejoice in our gifts and we thank God for His grace. Come, now is the time to worship. Let us pray. God of unity and peace, bind us together as we come now to worship. Strengthen the ties that make us your family. Grant us the grace to recognize our gifts and our place in this body. Guide us to hear your calling as you speak to our lives. Encourage us to bravely burst forth as pastors and teachers, prophets and healers, evangelists and leaders. Dwell in our very hearts that we may serve in humility, braided with strength and gentleness, intertwined with passion. Build us up in love that we may grow in our knowledge and our love to, of you. Speak your truth to our lives, that we may lead, lead lives worthy of your calling. Amen. The first hymn that we're going to sing this morning is number 3152. It's in the green uh, worship and song hymnal. Um, stand as you are able. Pass, or Sean will lead us through once, just so that we get the tune. It's, it is a new um, 
him, so uh, we'll do our best, and Sean will take us through once, and then the second time through is for score. that welcome, that peace of Christ to one another. The peace of Christ be with you.
And now the choir. <laughs> The scripture reading this morning is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 16, and I'm reading from the message translation. You were all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction, so stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who rules over all, works through all and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of generosity of Christ, each of us is given his own gift. The text for this is, he climbed the high mountain, he captured the enemy and seized the plunder, he handed out all 
he handed it all out in gifts to the people. Is it not true the one who climbed up also climbed down, down to the valley of earth? And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to the highest heaven? He handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gifts, and filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working with Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive in Christ. The Word of God for all people. Would you join your heart with mine in prayer? O God, our God, loving parent, beloved child, breath of love, bless the words of our mouths, consecrate the meditations of our hearts. May all that we do, all that we are, give glory to you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Quote, I love how welcomed Central Folk made me feel. From the moment I walked through the door on that Sunday years ago, I felt welcomed, loved, and appreciated. What do I love about Central Church? Hands down, the people. Central is a place to grow in faith. I love this church building and cherish many memories. End quote. So many of this beloved church family shared their love of Central Church with me when I asked that question. What do you love about Central Church? It was such a joy to read your words. There were these key phrases that kept repeating, welcoming, loving, caring, a place to grow in faith, a place of hope, a place of healing. You described your church family as a people who spring into action. Describe Central as a place that is filled, as worship that is filled with music and gifts, that has amazing outreach, a community of openness and compassion, a people of kindness, a church with a heart for mission, reaching out to those in need without judgment. I loved receiving your words, and as I read through them, I could hear your heartfelt prayers that surrounded them, your prayers for your church home and the ministry that we are all engaged in together. And so I prayed with your words, holding them before God, holding them in my heart, allowing them to come together to synergize with the Blessed Spirit into a story of this congregation. So we at Central Church are a people of Christ-like hospitality, of music-filled worship, of justice-centered service, and of lived faith formation. Those four titles, labels, headings, whatever you want to call them, are my attempt to pull together all that was shared with me and all that I have experienced in my first few months here to guide us in looking back at the past year and gazing forward into the year and years ahead. Christ-like hospitality, a spirit of welcome that reflects the grace of Jesus Christ in loving all, welcoming all, and fully including all. Music-filled worship, a community gathered in a wonderful way that crosses boundaries of space and time with our live stream, YouTube, cable TV, and in person, all united in the spirit and worship of our amazing God, filled with beautiful offerings of music that lift our souls together. 
justice-centered service. Reaching out in love to our surrounding community and beyond, seeking to create equity in all things, resources for day-to-day -day life, human rights for all, full, full inclusion, and lived faith formation, learning and growth for both individuals and the community that is both intentional through classes and groups like Sunday school and soul care, and that's lived, that's experienced in our work, worship, and welcome together. Hospitality, worship, service, and formation. The author of Ephesians would be proud. We spent a little time with Ephesians just a few weeks ago as we explored finding ways to be united and yet diverse, to be a people who created space for all, and did not let differences divide us. And that is certainly a significant part of what the author of Ephesians is seeking to do, to unite a diverse and divided people into one church, the body of Christ. That call for oneness, as Canoe just read, permeates its way through the whole book of Ephesians. But the primary call of this little book, this little sermon, is to define this new community called church that both Jews and Gentiles find themselves united in as they are now followers of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be church? What does it even look like? How are we to live together? What are we called to do? It was all brand new with no traditions, no book of discipline, no guidelines. How are these people to be together in this new way? The first half of the little sermon focuses on some of the theology behind being church. The fancy word for that is ecclesiology, with the word ecclesia being the Greek word that we translate church. It literally means the gathered community. Chapter 4, where our reading is taken today, is a turning point in the sermon where the preacher turns from the theology of it all and starts talking about the actual practice of being a gathered community. And the second half of the sermon hinges on the opening line of today's reading. You were all called. Each and every one of us, all called to travel the same road, that path of discipleship, following in the footsteps of Jesus. And we are to travel in the same direction, forward, toward a full life of community as the body of Christ. We were all called to travel the same road, in the same direction, Stay together. The words that you shared about your love for Central Church reflected this call from Ephesians' author. We are together, united and diverse, following in the footsteps of Jesus. The footsteps of Jesus, who welcomed everyone, children, those who were ill, outcasts, the religious elite, despised tax collectors and sinners, friends and strangers. To follow in the footsteps of Jesus, who modeled worship of God through attending Sabbath services regularly and taking time away in prayer and meditation. To follow in the footsteps of Jesus, who served, feeding thousands, healing, casting out that which oppresses, challenging popular beliefs about who was in and who was out, washing feet, going to the cross. To follow in the footsteps of Jesus is where our faith is formed. It is where we learn and grow together along the same road, on the same journey. This past year, Central has opened its arms in welcome, worshipped our awesome God, served our community and the world, and formed our faith together. Our fellowship comes naturally 
as we greet one another each Sunday and at events during the week. We have our cafe on Sundays, our welcome center. We engaged this past year in potluck dinners, 185th anniversary celebration, a chili and mac and cheese cook-off, tailgate parties, and so much more. So many opportunities for fellowship and welcome. You wrapped Pastor Michelle, Nate, and Alice in love as you sent them on to Rochester and First Asbury to serve. And then you opened your arms in welcome to receive me and have made me feel at home so quickly. This is truly Christ-like hospitality, the welcome of Jesus. This past year, we have been united in holy worship. Every Sunday, a mini Easter. And then throughout the year, we worshiped at special services such as World Communion Sunday just last week, All Saints Sunday coming up the first Sunday of November, Advent just around the corner, Christmas Eve, Epiphany, Lent, Holy Week, Easter, Pentecost. And so many people serve in our time of worship. Those that we can see up front, and those who work behind the scenes to make sure all our worship comes together with beauty and with love. Oh, and the music, right? Oh, the music. Piano, organ, chancel choir, bells, wind ensemble, cello, flute, and so much more. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. This past year, we have served and served and served. We hosted a flu clinic and many blood drives, and we have served hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meals through Shepherd's Supper. We helped many in our community find needed clothing and shoes, personal hygiene products, and so much more through our clothing center. We repaired bicycles. We sent over 30 children to summer camp at Sky Lake. And we combined welcome and justice together for Pride Palooza and rejoiced, rejoiced, rejoiced to see our beloved United Methodist Church erase discriminatory language at the General Conference just a few months ago. What a year. And through it all, our faith has been formed. We did so intentionally through Sunday school, soul care group, book discussions, United, United Women's Fellowship, and men's groups. And we did so informally through our fellowship, through our worship, through our service together. We have been working together within Christ's body, the church, as we learn to move rhythmically and easily with each other becoming fully mature in our faith and fully alive in Christ. We are called to travel together on the same road in the same direction. Thanks be to God. And you have made it all possible through the ways that you give of yourself, your time, your gifts and talents, and your resources. As our scripture reading today proclaims, Christ handed out gifts above, below, filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. You are all gift from Christ to this beloved church family, vital and loved. I don't know how we could even summarize all of the time and all of the gifts that you shared as we move toward the close of this year. But as a gesture of gratitude, we can give you a summary of the financial piece that you shared so generously. 38% of what you gave supported justice-centered missions that I mentioned just a moment ago. 37% of your financial gifts supported our music-filled worship in this beautiful space and through live stream and beyond. 18% of your tithe went to our intentional work of lived faith formation and 7% supported Christ-like hospitality because most of that beautiful hospitality work is through our time and our talents. When you give financially to the church, 85% of what you give stays right here 
at Central and in the surrounding community. 10% approximately goes out into the wider church of New York State and the Northeast. And about 5% goes beyond that and joins with monies from all Methodist churches around the globe to be in ministry in the most needed areas on planet Earth. What work you have all done. Amazing and beautiful. As we move further into October and embrace the joys of November, we're going to be dreaming each Sunday more and more of what is to come. So here's a few questions just to hold with you, and I'll make sure they're in our bulletin for next week. Who is God calling Central Church to be in 2025? How is God calling you to give of yourself, your time, your talent, your resources? How can we engage in deeper welcome and hospitality to our neighbors near and far? How might we enrich our worship even further? Where are the people in need not receiving the support and care necessary? Where are the gaps? And how might we create more intentional faith formation for all ages? Central Church, I cannot express adequately how wonderful it is to be a part of this church family. I can't wait to see what God has in store for us in 2025 and beyond. I am eager to hear your ideas, your dreams, and most importantly, where is the Spirit calling you? Where do you feel called? Amen, amen, amen. In response, let us sing hymn number 87 in our United Methodist hymnal, what gift can we bring? are the people that we identify as in need of prayer this week. Um, I'd offer Karen Friga, Norma Livingston, Randy Foote, Terry Mahonsky, Kevin Cristelli, Martina DeRose, and Sharon Carmine. Our prayer program for the families of the church include Rachel Cosimano, Lori and Jason Ferris, Pat and Knud Hansen, Barbara and Alan Jones, Dennis Madison, Elaine and Ronald Platt, Teresa and Doug Sivers, Sean Stafford, 
Joanne and Bill Wilson. Family and friends uh, needing special prayers this week include Richard Frederick, Frank Stephen Childs, John Carmine, Moise Zelaya, Eric Hossaman, Stephen John Schultz, Rhonda Hartley, Bernie Wilcox, Jovelle Horry Turman, and baby daughter, Shelley's cousin Paula and family, and our sympathies and condolences are extended to the family of Loretta King, whose auntie Georgia Glenn passed away on October 9th. And so now we come to the time when we offer our God glimpses of the week, or ones we're hoping to see in the week to come, and also share our joys and concerns. And we're doing something a little different. Um, we have our lovely um, Maggie Wolford, all the way out in Notre Dame, as our chat host. Wave at her. She's out there somewhere. I don't know which camera I need to wave at. And she's going to be letting me know what prayers come in um, while we're sharing those amongst the congregation. So what do you want to share on this beautiful, rainy morning? Microphone. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. And I just wanted to thank everyone who donated their time, their money, their help, everything for the luncheon. Um, once again, it was a great success. So we have money to go to our different missions that we have. Wonderful, wonderful. Good food, great mission. Any others? Maggie says, prayers of thanksgiving for time with family. Tyler and his father and I are, I need my glasses now. All, okay, let me go grab my glasses. <laughs> Don't you love those humble moments when your, your eyes say, well, you can try, but you know, that's why you have glasses. Tyler and his father and I are all watching. So we did wave at them and they're watching. Sheila. I like prayers for a friend of mine. Her name is Maria Fusco, and she just got uh, diagnosed with colon cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. We will definitely hold her in prayer. Are there others? Renee? I'd like to say thank you to Shelley for doing the luncheon and for everyone that helped. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Some of those volunteers sharing time and talent. Maggie says, for communities impacted by the hurricanes and also tornadoes across the Midwest. Definitely, definitely. Kara. I see a joy when I look out one of our windows and I see my delphinian plant growing for the second time this season. I can't believe it. And there it is, uh, not giving up. Even oh, though it, I'm waiting for the first frost and then, but two times this year, it is just a beauty. Oh, wonderful. So beautiful. Others. Denise. I'm having a joyous weekend with my grandchildren visiting. Oh, wonderful. What a joy. And today is my daughter and son-in-law's sixth wedding anniversary. So, oh. you know. I know, I, I don't really believe it, but it's true. <laughs> Any others? And nothing more on here. As we move into our time of prayer and meditation, I'm going to be using those four things we talked about in the sermon to guide us through our prayer. So would you join your heart with mine in prayer? O oh God, our God, loving parent, beloved child, breath of love, we, your children of Central Church, and all worshiping with us as visitors today, we have been gifted by you in ways too numerous to name. We are a people of Christ-like hospitality, music-filled worship, lived faith formation, and justice-centered service. Fill us with your power and your presence in this moment. Your example of loving all guides us to be a people of open welcome, of Christ-like hospitality. Open us to perceive around us any in need of your loving grace. Slow us down in our busy lives so we do not miss opportunities to share your love with others. We pray for those the world often fails to care for, 
fails to welcome. The homeless, those struggling to make ends meet, people who are ill physically or emotionally, those who are disabled, including individuals with substance use disorder, and those we name in our hearts before you in this moment. What a joy it is to come together in worship of you, creative and creating God. We give thanks for the worship experiences here at Central Church. We are grateful for all those who serve in worship. Musicians, ushers, our TV ministry team, liturgists, chat room hosts, pastors, scripture readers, counters, staff and volunteers who work behind the scenes to make sure all is ready. We lift our gratitude to you, God, in this time of worship. Discipleship is a journey. As the author of Ephesians reminds us, we are called to travel on this road together in the same direction. We are thankful for opportunities to form our faith as a community. Help us to seek and to find opportunities to deepen our faith in you. In the sixth chapter of the book of Micah, the prophet calls us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. We seek to be a people of justice, serving all in our community and across the world. Bless the work we are engaged in. Shepherd's Supper, the Clothing Center, Bike Repair, United Methodist Mission Hub, Central Serves, monthly mission projects, and so much more. We pray for all those in need of justice and kindness, those we know, and those who may be strangers, but are our beloved neighbors. All this we pray, united by your grace, and we join our voices as one in the prayer that Jesus gifted to us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Pastor Teresa alluded to earlier, uh, the breadth and righteousness of so many ministries here at Central are, will warm your heart and moisten your eyes. So. <laughs> As we offer of ourselves this morning, if you have a gift, uh, we have collection boxes at the bank, back of the sanctuary. If you want to give online or through direct deposit electronically and would like more information on how to do that, contact the church office and Alicia and Pat can help you through that. And because we are so blessed, let us stand and offer our praise to God by singing, Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
blessing it is to give. What a joy to share our time, our gifts and talents, and our resources for your work loving Christ in the world. Pour out your spirit upon us and all the gifts we share. May all spread your love ever outward. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 2153. I'm going to live so God can use me. The worlds will be on the screen. Church, your mission statement proclaims that you are a fully inclusive church that seeks, embraces, educates, worships, and serves all, serves all in God's love. Go forth into this lovely, rainy, but still lovely day and keep being you. Amen. <laughs>